offensive, but that's it. Hi, Mark here with the Exiles. Um, so this weekend just gone, we had uh, a group event up in Sheffield in the UK, uh, where we had um, various students and instructors from our schools in the UK and the US and Ireland um, all come together and, ju and just spend a weekend uh, training. Um, I we filmed a lot of the classes, um, and I've pulled this one together. This is on one of my classes on Fury's uh, Abritsari, um, and the class was geared around application of uh, Fury's Unarmed um, and kind of where it needs to evolve to, where it needs to, what it needs to become uh, within our school as you progress and develop within the, the whole system. Um, it's quite a long blog, um, it's quite informal because it was an Exiles event um, but it's I think worth watching to the end because a lot of the principles and the things that we cover in the sort of we covered in the first part of the class sort of come together um, towards the end uh, where we start sort of piecing things things together. Um, we didn't capture it all but I've watched it and it makes still perfect sense so hopefully it's still quite useful um, and as I say everybody there was already an Exiles member so already had have they already have quite a lot of exposure to the system and obviously the curriculum and fury. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll stop talking now and just roll on, but um, we hope you find it useful. Thanks again. Principles before we do some technical exercises, right? We're going to do three scenarios, all right? First scenario is just this. Yeah, first scenario. You don't have to pay attention to what happens because I'll explain it. Second scenario is this. Third scenario, Nick's allowed to be defensive, but that's it. Right? What did those three scenarios have in common? Well, the first scenario, I was just rushing him, yeah? It's just all I was interested in was punching, punching. I'm angrily trying to close. Bosh, 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 bosh. Distance disappeared straight away, okay? Because I just turned and I started throwing, yeah? The second scenario, I was trying to get in and close and grapple. It's the same thing. One, two, whatever. I'm getting in. Look. The third scenario, Nick was being defensive. And you saw what happened. He was purely defensive. I'm throwing that. Eventually, I'll get through. Okay? Distance disappears straight away. Okay? Especially in anger. The second important thing is that fighting is a series of trade responses. Okay? If he's being defensive only, he will lose. Okay? Because my action is always going to be quicker than his reaction. And this isn't just true of unarmed, this is true of combat. Okay? Defensive fighters always lose, and the distance you want to have there pretty much disappears all the time. We'll also cover that a little bit later. Okay? So the first couple of exercises we're going to do is bridging the gap. Really thirsty, lots of alcohol last night. It's bridging the gap. So, First of all, we're going to bridge the gap. Well, we're going to bridge the gap in two ways. The first way we're going to do it is that he is going to come into me, okay? So he's the uncontrolled, untrained, throwing the big haymaker, okay? And then what we'll do after that is he's going to want to stay at distance and I'll be close to him. So first up, we're just going to use the poster, okay? The unarmed, the adversary poster. Let me drop your heart down there if you want. So he's angry, he wants to close, he wants to come in, break, dislocate, etc. I'm going to let him come to me and I'm going to use my posture to do it. Okay? So we'll do a whole bunch of set pieces. So he's going to throw a big rack at his haymaker. First thing I'm going to do is just pass along the straight through. Okay? It doesn't matter what I hit, what I get, or anything like that. He's decided to, to close distance and bridge the gap. So I'm going to use my posture and let him. Okay? And then obviously from here, I've got the inside line. I can then start moving in, into the distance that I want to be at, which is grappling. Okay? So it's nice and easy. Off you go, push. Pass along the on the big right hand. Okay, so if you just tear off, keep it nice and tight. Um, you can start to potentially put two and two together and see how you can use posture against someone who's aggressively trying to close into you. Because you haven't got a lot of time. A fight starts a minute decide, the minute someone decides to have one, the second someone decides to have one. So potentially I don't have a lot of time. Okay, and again, for the next sort of 20 minutes now, we're going to be looking at how to deal with them basically coming into you. So effectively, the, the easy option of closing distance, all right? 
But if it's a rush situation, or if he's just throwing haymakers, or rushing in behind multiple attacks, just taking a poster and committing to a line of attack. Let's just say Nick just throws in a right hand. Just look, I've taken away the distance completely, and he's helped me do that, okay? Because this is where I want to be, right? Because this stuff lasts for ages, unless you're dead lucky. A good rule of thumb for a fist fight is if you don't knock him out in the first 10 seconds, it kind of exponentially increases. The likelihood of trying to knock him out exponentially increases. Reason for that is because once adrenaline is set in, those first 10 seconds are critical because you get a, what's called an adrenal dump. Now, it's actually very easy to knock people out when they've had that adrenal dump because the brain goes through quite a lot of confusion. Um, after that, things tend to settle down a bit and that's why you have these, you know, even pugilists, they can knock 10 bells out of each other for 15, 20 minutes at a time, both trying to punch, 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 they can't get a knockout. So we want to be close, we want to be grappling. Uh, right, now we'll do posture frontale. Again, we're going to sort of start building all this um, stuff up. Posture frontale, okay? You can practice coming in against the arm, coming in against the body. Also, what you can do is practice coming, if it's a more of a straight strike, you can practice coming, coming to the outside as well. If it's a very long lead jab, so you can, like, you can come in. But all I'm doing is closing lines of attack, all right? What I'm not doing is proper big blocks, if you like. So that right hand, I'm not doing like this. Yeah, because it's, I'm going to get twatted. Yeah, what I'm doing is closing a line of attack. So, bosh, yeah, I don't care about that anymore because I'm exactly where I need to be to start applying plays. Okay, so play around with Posse Frontale. We'll do this for a couple of minutes. Inside, yeah, if it's a straight strike, outside, whatever. If it's a jab, it's a long one, yeah. Just start playing around with it against the body, against the inside of the arms, the shoulders, etc. Start thinking a little bit about moving offline because we're going to we're come back to that. Okay, but stay nice and close. Yeah, the, the, the other guy is doing you a favour, right? He's closing, he's bridging the gap for you. As I say, and I tend to repeat myself a lot when something's really important, but you want to be in grappling distance, right? That's where you want to be. So if he's stepping into you, big haymaker or whatever, he's doing you a massive favour. So let's, before we start looking at the more difficult scenarios of when they don't want to close and you do, we just do a couple more principle-based stuff and then it starts getting a bit more exciting. So, um, <coughs> If they don't have to be striking, so they could just be trying to grab you. So we're going to do this as a bit of a, a bit of an experiment, sort of thought experiment, if you like. If Nick has come forward to grab me because he wants to grapple, okay, he's still bridging the gap for me, but obviously he's more of a grappling orientated guy, so he's not striking. In principle, I can use just my posture um, completely thoughtlessly. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to, we're going to set this up. You're going to start in Porta de Ferro. Iron door, and you're going to close your eyes. Okay, what your partner's going to do, and this is just so you know, not that you actually do this in the middle of an actual fight, but we're going to try and lead this on to something else. Nick is going to say go, and he's going to just grab me. Okay, it doesn't matter how he grabs me. What I'm going to do with my eyes still closed is just go to Posta Fontale. Okay, no matter what happens, no matter what he grabs, doesn't matter. I'm just going to come up to Posta Fontale, even if one arm's on the inside and one arm's on the outside. I'm just going to come up to Posture Fontale, but I'm going to have my eyes closed the whole time, okay? Give it four or five goes, and then, still with your eyes closed, come up to Posture Fontale and just grab a hold of it, okay? Doesn't have to be anything special, yeah? So you say go, Nick, I'll close with my eyes closed. You say go, go, yeah? Whatever you find, grab, push something, yeah? Same thing, my eyes closed, go. Yeah, oh, that's great, yeah? The, free, the point is, I'm just trying to grab a hold of something. I'm not trying to do a technique or anything fancy, I'm just gonna get used to just trying to grab something. Okay, and again, we'll build this on. So he's doing me the favor, he's closing to me. Eyes closed the whole way through. Partner says go, they're just gonna try and grab at you. Two arms high, one arm, one low, one high, one low. Eyes closed, posture frontale, and grab hold of it. Okay, keep it nice and close though. Um, literally, like, let's even just say we're sticking these two badminton courts because it's easier for the guys to get around and spend a bit of time with you if you're a bit close, so yeah. So go for it, rock and roll. Three minutes, we'll do something else. Cool, so they're coming into me, right? That just makes life so much easier because I want to be close. Obviously, he wants to be close because we're fighting aggressively, yeah? What if I'm looking at someone who doesn't want to close? Uh, they just want to strike or, or maintain distance? Well, the easy answer is if he doesn't want to close, he's probably not angry. He probably doesn't want to be there, okay? We'll assume, though, that he's trained and pretty pissed and just wants to maintain distance to find a moment of opportunity. Bridging the gap is easy when someone's closing into you. 
Yeah, as we've just done, the, the, the principles, we've nothing complicated about what we've just done, we've just used a bit of pasta and let them come into you. Very straightforward. It's really difficult when you want to close and they don't, okay? Some people spend their whole martial time, martial careers or whatever, martial journey, fist fighting, yeah? So they don't want to let you close because they, they want to be strikers, okay? You can make the argument that that's not a combat oriented mentality, but you have to make an allowance for it to be a possibility. So, we swap sides. So the first thing we're gonna do is a little exercise, right? When I did my coaching certificate, I, my whole principle was around teaching someone the basics of boxing in 15 minutes, okay? And what I did was, I actually used an exercise that we've been doing for, since day dot, which is something called patsy, all right? You've probably done this in your own classes. So it's a good place to start. First of all, we'll, it's a game, so it's a principle-based game. Have your hands on your head, and Nick is gonna use closed fists, because I don't wanna catch a finger, and his whole objective is to try and touch me on the chest. Now he's gonna be quick with his hands, but he's not trying to punch me, so if I mess up, I'm not gonna get done in the solar plexus. My whole principle is my hands have to stay on my head, unless he sticks an arm forward, and I'm just trying to cover, like this. It has to go back to my head the whole time, yeah? Yeah, and he can get quicker. I've gotta try and get things back to my head. Also, you can start using, start using elbows as well. Now, most of you will be familiar with this, okay? What we're gonna do is take the principles of Patsy and start putting things on the end of it, all right? He's not getting too close because remember, he's the guy that doesn't wanna to get too close. When we've done some Patsy to get your eye in, to get your focus in, what we're gonna be covering is the, the striking game, but with the objective of closing. So this is where it starts to get a bit more fun and a bit more technical, okay? Patsy first from the head, yeah? Use elbows, whatever. Move with it because obviously it just makes it significantly easier. Yeah. We've all done this before. It's a good little warm up. Keep it tight though, everybody this side. Notice how I then immediately walks that way. I've been. <laughs> Step up a bit. Yeah, this is why I wasn't too worried about a warm up. That's a warm up. Okay. Um, I actually have class notes, probably the first time ever, because I tend to go off on a bit of a tangent with stuff like this. Um, and I'm going to do it by accident now, but on purpose. So um, just bear in mind a couple of things when you're striking, just tuck your chin in, yeah? Um, and uh, yeah, look through the top of your eyes, because everybody's striking on it. Just a little thing. All right, um, so we're going to do a couple of set pieces, all right? And what I'm trying to do is give you principles to take away and stick back into your own training, okay? Um, so. <coughs> We'll do some set pieces to accomplish that. So let's say uh, I want to close with a bit of intent, all right? So we're going to develop this patsy basically. Pasta Fontale, right? He's going to send a right hander in. I'm going to cover this. Now, this is an important thing, okay? This little action that I'm doing here. Because his brain doesn't want to break his own hands, it's a biomechanical principle that when your hands feel contact of any kind when they're throwing a punch, the body automatically takes power away from it. Okay, that's a biomechanical fact. So when I'm doing that action, um, one, I am slightly deflecting it. I'm not blocking it, because blocks don't work in this kind of environment. I'm just changing its direction, but the action of just making contact takes the power out. So let's say I cover it, but I still get chin. By the time that happens, it's not gonna be as hard as it would have been, okay? So just, I'm gonna just throw little things in. So, Straight comes in, all right? I'm gonna just cover like this, just like you were just doing. It's nice and controlled, it's Foster Fontali, I've just covered it over, okay? What we'll do on the end of this is we'll just stick in a big right hand over the top and a little one down here, okay? We're gonna get used to bridging the gap with some intent, all right? So it comes in, it goes over the top, little one down here, and then we'll just leave it there, okay? It's a nice set piece, he can do it to me, I can do it to him, but it's one, two, look where I am. Oh my God, I'm in grappling distance, exactly where I wanna be. All right, so we'll work on this, we'll develop on this, okay? So we're literally gonna spend 90 seconds per person, we'll come back and move it on, all right? So keep it tight, have a few guys, swap it over. Right hand, left cover, right left. Principles of that set piece um, is that we are working with a striking guy to close, okay? He's through a punch. <coughs> Very important principle here. When I started this little section, I said, what if he doesn't want to be close? What if he just wants to keep stepping back? So as I've covered, he's moving back. Behind strikes or whatever. Behind strikes or whatever. I will beat him in three paces, okay? So if he's going backwards and I'm coming forwards with my stride, I'll beat him in three paces, which means I'll be close enough to grapple in three paces. The reason why is because my step forward is bigger than his step back. Also, in anger, 
People don't step back like this, right? People step forward like this when they're angry. Yeah, come on, they throw into it. People don't step backwards like that, so they're not taking massive strides. When people step backwards in fear, they do it like this. Yeah, because you're going back to that animal instinct. I don't know why, I'm not, you know, I'm not a scientist. So, if he doesn't want to close, but you're forcing the issue by dealing with this and look, grab it, look, I'll beat him, I'll get there every time. Okay, so just bear that in mind, all right? Next set piece, uh, I don't know, we'll do something off the lead hand. So, Pastor Fontale, uh, let's say he's going to jab, okay? What we're going to do is check the jab and use the front, the lead hand, to start giving him something to think about, think about as I'm closing, okay? So, jab comes in, look, that goes down, don't care where it goes, this comes straight over the top, and let's just say that'll do. I mean, we'll just go over them, yeah? Because this is where we want to be. Nothing technical, just give your mind something to think about. We're moving, let's see, hold me. Yeah, even if it's more subtle than that, I mean, I could come, I'm lucky, yeah, that'll do, the inside. I mean, I just want you to get used to building this up, all right? Yeah, I mean, no problem. Reach the gap. So, have a little play of that. Don't need longer than a minute each, and we'll come back to something. I just throw principles in as we go along, right? So, the first couple we've had is things like defensive fire always loses, yeah? It's fact, defensive fire always loses. Obviously, in this particular element, we're talking about someone who doesn't want to be in grappling distance, right? He keeps wanting to move back, he's relying on his strike. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to take that option away from him. Remember, after three paces, I'll catch him, at the most. And if I don't catch him after three paces, he is stepping back like this, he really doesn't want to be there, and I've got nothing to worry about because it's, it's not a proper fight, basically. <laughs> um, so, have a plan and stick to it, right? This is something we'll come on to in a minute, and we'll also come on to is the fact that fighting is more reaction than strategy, okay? There's a, and you'll probably start to see this in your own training, especially when you're dagger sparring and sword sparring, you'll stand there and you'll think, if he does this, I'm gonna do that. If he does this, I'm gonna do that. So that's how it needs to be to start off with, but it's not what it really becomes. Fighting is a series of trained responses, okay? And even if he doesn't want to be in distance, I have to go with my training and my instinct. I've got to try and apply my system and almost be slightly close-minded about it, yeah? Because I don't have time to make decisions, I'm relying on my training. So, a good example is this. If I'm from Foster Fontali, and he just comes in with a really big, low strike, I've got to obviously defend against that strike, right? Now, my training would tell me he's completely open. I want to grapple, therefore, I should start closing now. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I might use some strikes on the way in to do it, I might not, in this case, we're gonna. So, for example, from here, I might throw a loose uppercut and come over, look, he wants to keep going backwards, yeah? So what I've got to do, because I don't have time to think, oh, he's moving backwards, I need to do something else, is go back to my training, my instinct, and just let my training take over. So how are we trying to stick to it? This comes in, I'm down, come up, he's moving back, but look, I'll deal with what I've got, yeah? I won't abandon any plan, because I never had one. I'm dealing with what I've got. He's moving backwards, that's fine, I'll keep moving forwards. I'll, I want to close, I want to be here. So. That's the exercise we're going to do now. So, no strike comes in, boom. I'm, I'm going to try and do what my training tells me, but he doesn't want to let me do it. I'm just going to keep coming forward until I find myself in a position that my training tells me, ah, I'm familiar with this again. I know what I can do from here. I know what plays I can do from here, because, you know, I've trained it. One more time. Strike comes in, bosh, I come up, I come over. I might not get anything, but look, this is where I want to be. So that's where I want to try and stay. But it's reaction, reaction, reaction. There's a bent arm, I'll pull it in. Yeah, so on and so forth. Just have a play with that. So, boom, boom. You might make contact, you might not, so be gentle. But keep coming forward. Keep trying to get to that distance, because that's where you want to be at. And just react to see where it takes you. Obviously, this class is, me, I'm doing this class on the basis of you guys having an assumed level of knowledge, right? The great thing about everybody here being an exile is that you would have had exposure to some, if not all of this. So it makes it a lot easier for me. So, before we do the last exercise of this part of the class, and we move on to the second principle I want to talk about, let's just have a quick recap and then we'll do a quick exercise. On your <coughs> so the recap is, and again, it, it, I'm trying to get you sort of warm and loose as we're getting into the lesson, okay? Because the, the next part is a bit more physical. So, fight is a series of train responses. If he wants to close distance, it's much easier for me. All I've got to do is rely on my posture, okay? And I'll figure the rest out. There's a play, there's a play, there's a play. If he doesn't want to close, it's much more difficult for me, okay? And like I said at the very start of that part, if he really doesn't want to close, he probably doesn't want to be there. So it's a different kind of fight. But 
if I'm particularly inclined, I want to close. It's much more difficult to be the person bridging the gap. But no impossible. You just have to work with it. It's this mid-range, yeah, but I'll beat him. I'll always beat him when I'm coming in. And you will get hit, right? If he's throwing big punches in, yeah, I'm going to miss stuff. Look, oh man, I missed it. Yeah, because that's just fighting, man. Yeah, happens. that's why I'm so ugly. Before, so before we move on, I'm going to do a quick exercise. So I want you to go back to Pat, the Patsy exercise, but I want you to do it from Costa Frontale. Okay, what I'd like you to do is practice covering a line and closing. Okay, this exercise will teach you more in 10 minutes than I could do in a whole day of talking at you. From your posture, cover, cover, close. Yeah, I don't care how you get there. Double high, one high, one low, whatever. I don't care how you get there. Be any strike you want. Any move there you go, one, one, I mean, we'll just have one, two, it's one, two, one, two, one, two, look. Because this is where I want to be. As I say, 10 minutes of this is much more than a day of me talking about. So give it a go. Inside, outside. Let's say I go to the outside. Yeah, no, no. I just want to come in and close. This is where I want to be all the time. So give it a go. See what happens. Let's have 90 seconds of one person striking. Swap over 90 seconds and we'll stop. Closing distance is king. Yeah? In combat, in anger, that's where it's going to go anyway. Okay? And if it doesn't, one or both of you don't want to be there. Okay? Um, so, next part of the lesson is around applying things under pressure, all right? I have my own personal martial system, and the reason why I have it is because it works for me, all right? It's based on my injuries and all the other stuff. It's based on how I move and how I work. It's largely based on Fiori. It has, it's striking and grappling, obviously, but it has nine <coughs> unarmed techniques that are unique to what, how I like to do things, okay? Fiori shows 16, okay? And you may ask yourself, how can you make an unarmed system out of just 16 plays? Okay? The answer is, you need a system which is effective, quick to apply, and think about, almost thoughtless, if you like, and that deals with the most of the sort of likely scenarios and situations that you're going to have. And that's exactly what Fury's Abritsari is. It's only 16 techniques, but they probably cover, in my humble opinion, about 90% of most fist uh, hand confrontation. Okay, so it only needs to be 16 techniques. The other thing as well is when you start adding in the dagger and the other principles there, especially about you know things like uh, manipulation, manipulation of the arms and stuff like that. You've actually got a massive unarmed system. Okay, but those 16 uh, Abrasari techniques will cover at least 90% of all physical confrontations. Okay, is that a question? Uh, yeah. An utterance. Okay, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. So we're going to understand how to apply things under pressure. Before we do that, again, uh, last sort of seven minutes of a warm up, just to get your eye in. I just want you to do some upright body to body wrestling. Okay, get your heart rate up and all the rest of it. One over, one under. Okay, one over, one under. Okay, and I just want you to just move each other around, pull each other around, head through. Yeah, simple as that. When you've done that for about thirty seconds, what I want you to do is one active. One passive, actually I'll be active in passive, and I want you to just get used to pulling. So I'm the aggressive guy, he's just being semi-defensive. We're gonna get used to pulling, pushing, you know, just see. I just want you to get used to get your eye back in. So start pushing, feeling stuff. Yeah, one active, one more passive, okay? A minute or two, I'll call quits and then we'll start doing some techniques. Cool. Obviously you can learn techniques and stuff back at your home schools, so I'm trying not to do too many techniques, but because I want to build up a set piece, we're going to have to. So, um, all right, we all know the first and second play of average sorry, right? So he's trying to reach high and low. I'm stopping, I mean, you've all done this. I'm stopping the control of the hip, because this is for whatever reason failed. I don't care about this anymore. I don't want him to control my hip, because hip and shoulder control is a really bad way to place to be when you're grappling. So I'm stopping this, and then we all know the play, which is to come up, and over, yeah, we all know this. All right. What you to do, and if you don't, just stick a hand up and Nick or me or John or Simon will come and give you some. Right. So, um, yeah, so shoot on. Right, element number one. What we need to get used to, this arm's high, so this leg's forward. Uh, I want you to get used to trying to apply the technique and just going through it a couple of times, right? Two or three times. Then he's going to start bending the arm. Okay, and you know what happens from here. 
I can't do that play anymore. So immediately my brain goes, that ain't gonna work. But I've trained this, I know what I'm doing. I know that one option at least is to come forward like with an armbar. Yeah. So have a go at that. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the principles that are happening here and how you can start applying that across the rest of the plays. Okay, so simple as that. Comes in, stop this, yeah, it's bent already, so fuck it. Anyway, yeah, try a couple of straight arms, a couple of bent arms, but get used to that really speedy transition because we're gonna focus on that in a second. Also, manage and control a situation. We're not trying to restrain someone, right? We're thinking, I'm a soldier, I've just dumped over a wall, and as I land on the other side of the wall, there's an enemy soldier right next to me. Think that mentality. Get in quickly, efficiently, effectively, do the business. That is a combat-based system. Going back to the point I made at the beginning though, it's up to you if you want to make it a sport-based system, like Fury says, it's for anger and for sport, okay? Because all the techniques are the same, you just put them on a bit harder. The approach has to be the same. Because like I said at the beginning, person can't effectively have two different systems in their head. In the heat of the moment, it becomes a hybrid. Yeah, it becomes you. So just bear that in mind. Right. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, I told you about tangents, is the more time you spend in this environment, this arena, the more your brain is a wonderful tool at taking easy and short options, yeah? And you'll start to have subtleties that work for you. So when you've played with this sort of stuff quite a lot and someone grabs a hold of you, there's things you can do to improve your success rate, okay? Like I know that for me, and this is just purely for me, I'll do the technique exactly as Fury prescribes, but I always, for some reason, add in a little tiny gather as I'm doing this action. I don't know why, it just works for me, okay? He doesn't say to do it, it's almost inconsequential, but it works for me. So I know, if we're fighting a grappling or whatever, and it just comes in, bosh, I know that if I make another little step, it just works for me, and I will generally improve my success rate. So there's little things like that, that you just pick up over time, and because you're pressure testing, you'll find your own little options and answers and ways of doing stuff, you understand? Next element before we do a, a couple of uh, more set pieces is I just want to have a third option, if you like, from that high-low grab. So let's say he comes in high-low, and let's say that I've completely missed this arm, okay? And it's failed, okay? So we've already done the, I've got control, I've tried to do this, that's failed, so I've done this, we've already got those. So let's have another option. I've shot, oh my God, I've missed it. Yeah, again, training takes over. We've got an answer for this, no problem. This arm is low, so that's where I'm going to go this way. I'm going to come around, secure onto the belt, come over the top. Oh yeah, or I can come underneath, doesn't matter. It's a very key principle, I can push it straight back. Or I can push it this way, exactly like Fury tells us to do. Okay, so you've got another what the fuck moment. So if he's just trying to grab me aggressively, yeah, I know what I can do from here, no problem. Bosh, off I go. If I completely flat that, oh my god, I missed it. Yeah, the brain just takes over. That's the whole... That's the whole premise of a combat-based system. It's reaction, not strategy. So let's give that a try. It's gonna shoot in, I'm gonna purposely miss it. Oh dear, I know what to do. This is low, let's come underneath. Just give it a push, that's all I need to do. Let's take a moment. Yeah, but get used to that snappy action. And then we'll do a five-part set piece where we'll start understanding exactly how quickly you need to get with those reactions in reality. Okay, so give that a go. A minute each, two minutes each, have full stop, we'll come in with we'll this. So we're just going to take it to one, add in one other, one other option, cannot speak today, another option, um, which is a golden rule, right, so uh, someone can call it out, fear an arm on your face, what do you do? Oh, push the elbow, exactly, so we've got that. Cheek sheet, we're just, come in, grab hold, I'm going to just come up and do my play, just going to push the elbow, Stop that, okay, let's make it a game, alright, so be gentle. Yeah, for people pushing elbows, try if you can to push the forearm. You would push the elbow, but we've got to protect our elbows this weekend. So try and push the forearm, just for argument's sake. So he's going to come in and grab me. I'm going to come forward, try to do the play. He's just going to get used to just pushing, pushing the elbow. But do it nice and quick and aggressive. Comes in, bosh, bosh. Yeah, push the elbow. There you go. Job done. Just let's have a bit of fun with it. Yeah, a minute each. Job done. And move on. Try. Right. Right. Uh, right. So a quick demo then, so a quick recap before we do our set piece and we do the closing bit, right? So um, let's start from the very beginning. So your posture are uh, essential, really, especially because they're geared up for all of this stuff going on. So if he's closing into me, I've got, I've got most of my fight with my posture. Yeah, that's why they're so cool. Posters are positions to wait in, they're moments in time, they're pushes, exactly like that little ball I did a couple weeks ago. It's easy when he's coming into me, 
because he's bridging the he's bridging the gap for me. No problem. He's bridging the gap for me. Harder when I want to bridge the gap to him, but again, we want to, I want to be there. That's the distance I want to be at. Again, soldier over the wall. Oh my god, I've got to kill him. Yeah, I've got to hurt him really quick. So we've played around with that a little bit. We've played around with some patsy-based principles, no problem. Yeah, we've done all of that. We've touched, we've touched on that. Yeah, look, yeah, that's this. Look. And the top one we've got, we've got exactly the same play we were just working on. Yeah, Closing the distance is much harder when he doesn't want to be there. Important thing, just a reminder, I'll catch him after three. Look, that's actually a pretty perfect example of what, what happens. Yeah, I'll catch him after three. Unless he doesn't want to be there, in which case it's a different kind of fight. So we're going to start putting some bits together. Um, which include the last element, which was applying things under pressure. So we did a couple of set pieces with some techniques there, which is about, I try that, it fails, it's okay, my training says try that, oh my god, it's failed, I try that, oh my god, it's failed. Fighting is a series of trained responses. So set pieces as follows, we're going to put some bits together. Uh, big haymaker comes in, uh, let's do it, we do that? No, do it straight one. Straight strike comes in, we're at distance now, I'll cover it, okay, and I'll come through like this, with a low strike, remember, I'm only striking to support my grappling, Underneath, then I'm going to come up and just take a hold of him like this. Okay, that's element number one. Then we're going to do element number two and element number three, and this will become a set piece. So we're moving over, strike, and up. Yeah, how I grab him from here is up to me. This is one of my favorite chokes in the world. But if you already took choke chokes, so we don't do that. But it's a very dominant position to be in. Okay, <coughs> step with the right foot as well if you want. Now, catch it underneath, over the top. It's perfect. Yeah. He's come to me. Okay. That's element number one. Okay, both have a go. Then we'll add in where that goes to. Cool? Fuck them up. Now, besides the point, right? He's the one that's made a strike to me. The reason why a little strike like this is so useful is because it stops him from stepping backwards, right? If I just made that cover and come up, we'll just step back. We'll just step back, more than likely. So when I make this cover, yeah, I, hit, I hit him. So he starts thinking about that, not his footstep. Come up. Yeah, that's the reason why a little strike like that is so important. We do one strike, two strikes, this comes in, look, one, two, up here, you know, it doesn't matter. But I'm, I'm, that's why I'm striking to support my grapple. Yeah, that's, this is why I'm doing this principle. Next bit, uh, okay, so I'm just striking it. He's gonna do the action to me, so he's gonna cover. Yeah, underneath he comes, he's gonna come up from his, from his holding his toe. What I'm gonna do from here is, again, Back to training. I am going to step back, but obviously it's now the hold is on, so it's a different kind of step back. I'm going to try and leverage this down. Okay. That's all I want you to do for now. Is just take it to this position. All right. So I make the strike. Bosh! It comes underneath. I'm going to come up and over. Got to work for it. It's not easy. And this is the position that you're in. Yeah. It's not a choke. Can be, but combat mentality says it's not a choke. It's more of a neck wrench. But this is all I want you to do for now, okay? And then he'll have an action to do in a minute. And what we'll do is when we put it all together and do it quickly, you'll get a sense of how this stuff needs to start looking in terms of speed and application. That's what I'm trying to do with this, okay? Need to see it again or we're good? <laughs> all right. Hi, Gav. Hey. You're early, mate. Hey. <laughs> Love it. Late for, be late for your own funeral, man. In about a minute, if you don't get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. Uh, what's that piece we're doing? Sorry, again, what was we doing? He was doing... Oh, yeah, we're doing that. Okay, cool. And then you were begging me like that. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Right, obviously he's got to be quite quick with that, okay? Because I'm not going to just put the hold on and wait, okay? Because that's a throw, that's a choke, it's whatever I want it to be, right? He doesn't get to dictate that, because he's the good guy and the bad guy. He's a fury, I'm not. So that could be whatever he wants. So he has to be dead fast when he does that. Strike comes in, bosh, as I say, one strike just to support my grapple. Up I come, he's got to go start moving on that bad boy straight away. Okay, now, I'm back to good guy again. So, and this is where it starts getting a bit funky and interesting. So, strike comes in, cover, strike, there's my hold. He starts putting this on me, I'll stop it, and I'll come out this way, okay? So, one play becomes an accessible option from a completely different, completely random position, all right? Fury doesn't tell us about that bit. It doesn't matter. It's the same play, same principle. It's my own training that said, I'm on the outside, I've got my left foot forward. Yeah, I can do this. 
That's what my training tells me. All right. So strike, strike up. He puts that one. That's okay. I'm here. Come up. No, no problem at all. And it's it's all right. That that'll work. No problem. If his arm bends because he's quick, okay. I've got other options. I've got you know different plays. So fighting is a series of change responses. Go and have a go at that. Water and break time, all the rest of it. Uh, it's just again one set piece. I think I'm. Yeah, it's all good. Right. Uh, again, though, often a tangent. A couple of things. So, what happens if you're too late with this arm? Okay. So uh, he makes a strike at me. I cover it. Come underneath. Come up. He starts to wrap. What happens if I'm just too slow, too late? Okay. Another important wrestling tip, marky tip. This one. Don't fight for something you're not going to win. Right. Again, experience tells you where you have strength, where you don't. At this point, there is very little point in trying to fight something. Like this, when it's on tight and he starts cranking this on, you've got to start thinking outside of what's going on up here. Okay? Because the longer I struggle against something where I've got a disadvantage, the longer he's got the durable and nasty stuff. Exactly. So if I'm too slow with that setup again, Coming under Bosch, there's this, he starts to roll ahead. If I am too slow and he's got that on, I've got to start thinking about other things. There's a hand high up here, okay. There's a hip belt there, okay. He's probably going to try and straighten me up with this one. That's fine. No problem, I've got to play for that. You understand? Fighting to see the train responses. No problem at all. The other question I had, this is a good question is uh, the person that's coming back out onto the... Uh, so we've got SMP again, I'll, I'll stop and I'll explain. Bosch, Bosch, coming up. He does the wrap, and I've got my arm here. Because this, this is a pretty common thing with, with, with wrestling people, is if he's trying to choke me, okay, that's all I need to weather the storm. He can't choke me if I've got something in between his arm and my neck. He can hurt my neck and throw me over, but he can't choke me from here. In fact, I spent a whole year just basically using a finger to stop people choking me. All I need is something in the way. Anyway, people were saying, what happens if I catch this, so they go, Nick, if I've been quick enough and I catch this, and where do I end up out? So some people are ending up right up here. That's okay. I'm not being strangled, no problem. From here, there's loads of different options. The easiest one to access, well, there's a face, there's a knee. No problem, whatever, yeah? Some of you were doing the disengagement and ending up up here. That's okay too. I've got arms, I've got dagger plays, you know what I mean? It's one system, no problem. So again, that has more of an evolution, evolution, evolution. Is there any questions before I summarize and close up? Wicked, cool bins. So, lots of principles there. I tried to not do too much just techniques because you can do that back in your own schools. Where this stuff develops to, is it being reactive, not strategic. There's an element of strategy, of course. It's reactive. I say it for like the tenth time. Fighting is a series of train responses. Okay? Think about combat mentality. Okay? The difference with this system or systems like it is that you're looking at soldier to soldier more than you are security guy versus tow rack. Okay? It's that kind of mentality. But where the sporting aspect comes in is that you make the choice. Okay? When I'm doing this play, or whatever, I make the choice, right? I can break his arm or I can just throw him over. I make the choice. It's the same technique. Therefore, my brain has less options. Just do the technique you know you can do. That's failed. Do something else. That's failed. Do something else. All for my training. Cool bits. Right. Uh, in summary, my biggest problem with HEMA in the moment, in Germany martial arts, is that in order to understand the application of your art, you have to understand the environment that it's in. Okay? And this isn't the fault of most people, but most people haven't been in a lot of physical confrontation. All right? Some of us have, and it's great, because you get to apply it back to your art and learn from it. People think you have time to be strategic, and this isn't just with unarmed, okay? This is with sword and stuff too. They think that you have time to be strategic. Oh, we've met in Grisada. I'm gonna decide what to do. That's not how this works, okay? I've met in Grisada, and because I know it's next to Sparta, I know I can do this technique, or I know I can do that technique. And so because I've met on the punter, I know all oh, these points online, I should be doing that. Your brain needs to react to it. You don't have time, especially in the heat of the moment. I'm not talking about sparring, I'm talking about when it matters, with sharps, with no padding, no protection, yeah? It's reaction over strategy. And that's the problem with HEMA. 
is that people, again, for no fault of their own, they don't understand the, the psychological effects of confrontation. Adrenaline, fear, frenzied attacks. You know what I mean? And obviously, we can apply some of what we know today to the same mentality of 600 years ago. A punch-up is the same now as it was then. Yeah? Obviously, we can't run around the streets understanding what it's like to fight with a sharp sword. <laughs> Although there is a group that do that, I saw that. Um, but we can, you know, it's the same sort of ballpark, right? Even with the sharp sword, there's going to be similar sort of fear of the confrontation and all the rest of it. So we can sort of backwork it a little bit. Um, that's kind of it for me. I'm sorry if it was a bit disjointed, but I've actually had to cut a couple of bits out because we've run over, but it is what it is. Um, the good thing is, as I say, you're all exiles, so, I mean, it's not really, it's been the easiest class I've ever taught, really. Um, if there is any questions, ask your teacher or ask me or whatever. I think we've got a quick break now and then look at that schedule thing because I've got no idea. <laughs> All right, so thanks everybody. <laughs>